thumb and heart of America, melting pot of every race, creed, color, and religion and humanity. From my famous stockyards to my towering factories, from my tenement district to Swank Lakeshore Drive, I am the voice, the heartbeat of this giant, sprawling, sordid and beautiful, poor and magnificent citadel of civilization. And this is the story of just one night in this great city. Now meet my citizens. This one is Greg Warren, a mechanical man working in a window. Once he was an actor, now he's down to this. <laughs> Johnny Kelly, also one of my citizens. A man who tonight has reached a crisis in his life. He came here at this early evening hour to see Sally Connors, free, wise, and 21. She has the face of an angel, and a young university professor once mistook her for one. But when he discovered her profession, Dancing in a nightclub, his love stopped, and Sally almost stopped living. Move it, Buster. Oh, Johnny, it's you. Yeah, hi. Why don't you go up and park it? Hello. This early show's a drag. You're telling me there weren't more than a dozen couples out there. Johnny! Now, folks, another lovely young lady. Beautiful and direct from Paris. Well known to discriminating audiences all over Chicago. The exquisite, the graceful and voluptuous, Agnes Dubois. Well, here goes nothing. What brings you here at this hour? You. I wanted to talk to you. What about, sweetie? Well, what about, sweetie? Us. About us. Oh. It's Kathy again. Yeah. It's pretty wry. I can't see... So you're getting cold feet. It's a big move to make. You said yourself it's what we both wanted. You said the way things are now, you felt smothered. I do. And so do I. When I was younger, when this whole tired, cockeyed world was younger, I was going to be a pretty shining star in ballet slippers. Now I've been ground down to this. Four shows, night after night. Sweat, more sweat, and leering eyes. I'm just like you. I'm suffocated. Sally. You talked about California. Live in the sun under the great big crazy sky. Honey, I guess I do want that for us, but I... But you're sunk in your rut and you'll never get out. Do you know I've given my notice here? You can cancel it, can't you? No. They've already hired a replacement. Honey, I, I... I'm sorry. Sometimes I think it's right, and sometimes... Forget it. What do you intend to do? Go away with Greg. That mechanical robot out in the window? You're backing out on me. What do you want me to do? Crawl into a deep freeze? You talked so big. We made such plans. Never mind, Johnny. Get this goodbye over with quickly. Come here, Johnny. I've been there.
this is another one of my citizens. No, not him. Not the little fellow. Him, Hayes Stewart. He started out in his youth to become a magician. And magic is still his hobby. Hayes became so talented with his fingers, his hand was so much quicker than the eye, his greed so much greater than his conscience, that he began picking people's pockets, and his career as a hoodlum went on from there. And here is my most brilliant criminal attorney being interviewed by the press as he stands beside his lovely young wife, Lydia, a man who in the eyes of the world is the ultimate of success, fortune, and good living. I'll get it done. No, no, I'll get it, my dear. You stay here and charm the gentleman of the press. Will you excuse me a moment? Hello? Yes, this is Penrod Bedell. Hmm? No, I'm not busy. Nothing that can't be interrupted. This is Johnny Kelly, Mr. Bedell. I've changed my mind. I've decided to listen to your offer. Uh-huh. Well, I'm... <laughs> I was almost sure you would. Uh, uh, you better come here tonight and uh, take the service elevator. Okay, I'll be there. Johnny, haven't you left for work yet? Look, just because I'm your mother-in-law, you could answer me. Oh, well, have it your own way. But, Johnny, do you realize this is three times this week that Kathy's had to stay late at the office? And with you working the graveyard shift, why, you scarcely see one another anymore. I declare I wonder why you bother to stay married. But then she makes more money than you do. And I suppose that makes it very convenient, very comfortable for you, makes it nice and easy. Well, no matter how much I try to do for you and Kathy, it just isn't appreciated. Sometimes... Sometimes I don't even think you like me coming over. But after all, Kathy's all I've got. <laughs> I'll tell you this, Johnny Kelly. If I were Kathy, I wouldn't stand it for a minute. I'd just walk out. Do you hear me? Goodbye, Mother. I want to talk to you. Did last night. Whatever you left out, your mother filled in today. Don't leave this minute, please. I'm sorry I have to, Kathy. What few years I've left of this life, I want to enjoy. A woman should certainly have the privilege of seeing her own daughter whenever she wants to. Mother. Oh, hello, honey. What did you tell Johnny? Nothing. Nothing at all. Why? Has he gone? Yes, he's gone. Too bad you didn't marry that Kitchener boy. Him and his wife are living out on Lakeshore Drive. Not that Johnny isn't decent and honest and all, but you should have had a man who could give you the comforts of life. If you'd listened to me, Kathy, you never would have married Johnny in the first place. Telephone for you, Pop. Okay, Bill. Sergeant Kelly. Hello, Pop. I hate to bother you, but I've been worried about Johnny. He's been acting so strangely. And just tonight, I found part of a letter he had started to write to his captain. What did it say? Well, it sounded as if... I hate to say this. It sounded as if he were thinking of quitting. I'm sure you're wrong. There's nothing the matter with Johnny. Nevertheless, I wish you'd have a talk with him. I'll catch up with him at roll call. Will you call me later? Sure. And you take it easy now. Quit fretting. Oh, I can't help it, Pop. I love the guy. That makes two of us. Kelly. Junior, that is. Here. Williams. Here. O'Malley. Here. Anderson. Here. Michaels. Present, sir. How long have you been with us, Michaels? Three months and two days, sir. You want to see Johnny? 
You see all checked in? Take off, Junior. King. Here. Griffin. Here. Conlon. Here. McAleer. Here. Wrong pop. Oh, I just happen to be in the station. Oh. Farrell. I'll, uh, I'll walk you down to the garage. How have things been going? Fine. Fine, great. Couldn't be better. Sour about something? I hear the Bears are one touchdown favorite Sunday. Don't change the subject. Stop digging at me. What's the matter, Johnny? Don't you like your job? Yeah. It's making me filthy rich. Still thinking of California and that fishing boat, aren't you? Anything but this. I could have you fired for a crack like that. You'd be doing me a big favor. Kathy's worried about you. Oh, been complaining again, huh? No, she just loves you, Johnny, that's all. I mean, she loves her job, that big position of hers. Maybe instead of a nice, friendly chat, you'd like an unfriendly punch in the nose? Not tonight, Pop. Their knees up. Okay. Where's my partner? Uh, sick tonight. Uh -huh. Same old earache, I suppose. Well, he ought to have his ears cleaned up or chopped off. Let it roll. Who are you? I'm your partner for tonight, Kelly. How do you know my name? I've known it for a long time. Wish I could return the compliment. I, I don't think I know you. Well, you can just call me uh, Joe. As a sergeant along, it figures I do the driving. You might be a sergeant yourself someday. Not me. Sure about that? Positive. Wonder what kind of night it's going to be. Well, this guy usually has a pretty quiet. Car 108. Car 108. East side, 9th District. 10316 Avenue J, second floor in the rear. Man beating a woman. The city at night, a million homes, three and a half million people, all different from one another. People loving, people hating, people stealing, people praying. Same old shine over. Car 284, car 284, the Starlight Ballroom, and knifing. Probably some goon jealous of a taxi dancer. Spends 10 cents and thinks he's in love. The grief of the city. I'm sick of listening to it. How did a man in your frame of mind ever become a policeman in the first place? My old man, Sergeant John Kelly. Sergeant, he's been on the force for 27 years. He wants us to be a family of cops. He pushed me into it. I suppose you had different plans? Anything but being a cop. That reminds me, I have a little errand. Do you mind watching the car for a few minutes? No, not at all. Be right back. Oh, hello, Johnny. Come in. Thank you. I gave the cook the night off. Will you have a drink? I'm working. <laughs> For me or the police? <laughs> it depends. Well, Johnny, I could make a big man out of you. I've helped a lot of people. It's a hobby of mine to take a human being and give them uh, glamour and uh, confidence and polish. Darling. Will you excuse me a moment? I know you're busy, darling, so I'm going over to Helen's for a while. Did you have to call me in here to tell me that? I wanted to say goodbye. I couldn't very well have done that in front of company, could I? Be home early? Of course. Give my best to Helen.
see, Johnny, this is the thing. I can give a person uh, dignity and pride, help them face the world. I can face the world. Oh, can you? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The world you're in now? I see how you win your court cases. Let me tell you the story of a man I once helped. His name is Hayes Stewart. Rather handsome chap. Considering the tawdry profession he was in, he was a pickpocket. Did you ever hear of anything lower than a pickpocket? Yeah, I've heard of a few. <laughs> well, I met him in a rather odd man. <laughs> well, he stole my wallet. He emptied my briefcase. Then came to my apartment and had the gall to try and blackmail me for its contents. And he was really very crude at it. You should have turned him in. No, no, he could be of use to me. I, <laughs> before he left here, I convinced him that uh, I could find better things for him to do. For instance, certain documents in my possession often prove very valuable during a trial. Now, he's worked for me ever since. He's prosperous, wears the finest clothes, and has the manners of a gentleman. Yeah, from the instincts of a killer. I've heard of him. Well, here's the job I had for you. Mr. Stewart is becoming very ambitious. He wants to be independent. He's going to try to break into my office safe. Oh. What's he after? A document. What? A declaration of independence? <laughs> That's what he thinks. He'll be at the Tester building on Dearborn Street at 1 a.m. this morning. I want you to grab him right in the act. You don't need me to get him. Call headquarters. They'll be glad to get an advance notice on burglary. Oh, if Mr. Stewart was simply arrested, taken down and booked, it would be rather ticklish. Unless I spring him within a few hours, why, he might start singing. What do you want me to do, kill him for resisting arrest? Oh, no, nothing so crude. <laughs> Rough him up a little bit if you have to. Slip the handcuffs on him and then shove him in the back of the police car. And then take him over the Indiana state line. Why? He'll only come right back. No, no. The Indiana police are looking for him. A slight case of uh, manslaughter. A year or two in the penitentiary. Seems like an awfully roundabout way to get rid of somebody. I don't exactly want to get rid of him. What he needs is a lesson in ethics. I'll let him cool for a few months in the Indiana jail, and I'll step in and uh, obtain his release. He will be grateful to me, and our relationship will be resumed. There's just one hitch. Oh, yes, of course. I forgot the most important thing. Huh. There's $5,000 in this. Let's call it a gift for whatever is your favorite charity. It's a lot of money. But when I have an important errand done for me, I, I'm an extremely benevolent man. Obviously. But that's not what I meant. No? What then? Tonight I'm not available. Not while I'm wearing this. Tomorrow will be different. No. Tomorrow will be too late. The time is tonight. It won't work. I'm not going to try it. Yes, you will. And I'll tell you why. Hayes has been palling around with a young kid. Sort of a sidekick. The kid hasn't become involved in anything yet. But if Hayes continues to be on the local scene, little Stubby is going to be in deep. And you'll be looking up at him in the police lineup, holding his cap in his hand and blinking at the lights in his face. Any particular corner on the Indiana line you want Hayes Stewart dumped on? Third and East Streets. He'll be there. If I want to get in touch with you for any particular reason tonight... Car 749. Uh, that would be rather awkward. Then try the Silver Frolics on Wabash. Ask for Angel Face. Angel Face? Yeah, she works there. Get your errand squared away? Yeah, part of it. Car 12, supermarket, 3546 Haddison Street, burglary in progress. Everything quiet? We haven't been asked to do a thing so far. Car 134, car 134, corner of Elston and Montrose, disturbance on street. It's like a jungle. Ever think of how it'd be without the police? Sure, every man for himself. 
violence, bloodshed, fear, no protection. You lecture on the side, Sarge. Car 44, car 44, 4721 Hyde Park. Meet robbery victim, a soldier in tavern at that address. Probably some guy just back from Korea been rolled for his train ticket and whatever money he had. Sure, it happens every night. In a way, we're like soldiers. An army of policemen. Knock off, will you? You're not very impressed with your job, are you? It's my last night on the force. Oh. Why? Because I'm not impressed. Well, you can do me a favor. Give this to the captain in the morning in case I'm not there. Tells him I'm fed up with the job. Fed up with life, too? No. Far from it. Is he mechanical or is he real? Anybody who comes up with the right answer will be a guest to the house. Watch him stand. Watch him move. Ask yourself whether he is real or whether it is all coils and springs. Then come in. And Some gimmick, huh? Gets him inside, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Car 11. Calling car 11. 50th in Dearborn. A dead man in the vacant lot. Want to have a cup of coffee? In there? Yeah, they give us courtesy of the kitchen. Showing their bet to keep this policeman of Chicago happy, huh? Hours ago? Yeah. Angel face just went on. Yeah. You gonna wait for her? Yeah. I'll tell you something. It's getting so the mechanical man practically busts a spring every time he sees you walk in here. You gotta leave her alone. That crack could go for a lot of people. Like those guys out there. Two old fashions. No ice, no water, no sugar, no grenadine. On the level. Greg is serious about her. He's got his coils wound up too tight. He wants to get out that plate glass window and work up an act with her. That's what I've heard. Two vodka martinis. The people who ordered them Russians by any chance? Who knows? What do I have to do? Get an affidavit every time anybody orders vodka? You're a clever kid, aren't you? Drop dead. I'll give you a tip, Buster. If you're as crazy about angel faces, I think you are. You move in fast. Got a stopwatch. I thought you said goodbye. I did. What do you want? A repeat performance? Want to smooch? Oh, uh, come on, guys. Let's have some coffee, huh? I can sure use it. All right. What's the message? I've had it in my notice, too. What notice? To the police. I'm quitting. Tonight's my last night. All those plans we made, we're going through with them. Are you sure this time? I am. We start fresh. Old slate white plane. No past, only a future. You did come back to me. How about you? Are you sure I'm the guy for you? Yes. Is that one else you'd rather be with? Like a mechanical man or a college professor? A cop. I'm sick of this town. I'm with you, Johnny. 
when I first came to this town, I was going to be... Oh, there were a lot of things I was going to do. Become famous. But Chicago's the big melting pot, and I got melted, but good. Tomorrow's when you're doing it, please. I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll pick you up in the morning at the apartment. We'll leave then. Be ready. I am ready. Car 743. Car 743. 825 Sedgwick Street. Sick woman on the sidewalk. Hey, that's a missing squad roll. Let's get over there. Car 749, going in on that call at 825 Sedgwick. Car 749, okay. Hey, that coffee cup must have had lipstick on it. better take over. What happened? Her husband came running down the street yelling for a cab. I slammed on my brakes and we went inside after. I got her halfway into the cab, but I figured it's best that we don't move her. Give me a hand, Joe. Yeah. Easy. Easy does it. Whatever. Get a blanket. makes the third baby I've delivered in the last two months. Maybe you should have been a doctor. <laughs> Dr. Kelly. I'll take it. Hey, take it easy, will you? How many babies do you think I've handled already this week? I don't care how many you've handled. Take it easy. You talk like you're its father or something. You got any kids? Out of my pay? Who is it? Stubby Kelly. Back again. What you been doing? Goofing? I thought you were supposed to be home before now. No, I'm working, remember? Your old man thinks you're still bell hopping here? Yeah, sure. Pretty gullible, isn't he? He's a square. But he'd really go to bat for you if you got in a jam, wouldn't he? Naturally. Really go all out? I'm his son, ain't I? You ever told him that you uh, know me? No. My brother Johnny or my old man. You told me not to. Well, it may just come a time that I want you to tell him. How do you figure I'm ever going to get in a jam? I feel like I'm rotting away. Staying around street corners whistling at dolls. Rather than getting sandwiches and jam oak for those guys in a pool hall. I had more fun when I was a bellhop here. But why don't you let me go with you sometime? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Why don't you let me turn a trick with you? How about tonight? Are you kidding? Nope. Tonight's the night you go with me. Oh, man! That's it over there. You follow me over, not too close. I'm going in through the freight chute. I want you to help me open it. I'm going in with you, ain't I? No. As soon as I'm out of sight, you come back and wait here in the car. 
Anybody ask you why you're sitting here, tell them, tell them you're waiting for your old man. Okay. That's the building. It's funny. What's funny about it? Nothing. Coincidence, that's all. Lots of big jewelry firms, insurance offices, attorneys. Yeah. the elevator. Heard it as plain as anything. Ain't supposed to be a soul in this building, but I saw that indicator move up to the 16th floor. We'll go up and take a look.
This is Hey Stewart. Hi. I'm got to see you. I scored a big handful of nothing. Meet me at the place. Well, that's all now. That's all. <laughs> I would have sworn somebody was here. What you doing? I just wanted to see what brand it was. Yeah. What brand was it? Nervous Smelly, 90 proof. I suppose you boys are laughing at me, but I saw that elevator. I don't know. Man, we're not laughing at you. This is what we're paid for to answer every call. Most of them don't amount to much, but you can never tell when it's for real. Who knows? Maybe I'll see you later on tonight myself. That's right. And if you ever see anything that bothers you, anything that you wonder about, you get us over here. I sure will. Sure will do that. What? What are you doing here? What do you mean, what am I doing here? Just what I said. Well, you sent for the police, didn't you? Yeah, but they left. They left without me? You're a cop? Sure. Detective Bureau. And, uh, telling them kids about that elevator not moving. It did. You were right. You really think so? I know so. Now, will you let me out? Oh, I uh, sure will. Sure will. <laughs> Pretty green. It's the exact model and color I was going to get Kathy for Christmas last year. I want it too much dough. Well, maybe you can get it this year. They've been married. Three years and four months. Did she know you're leaving? How did you know I was leaving her? I mean, does she know you're leaving the police force? Knock off, will you, Sarge? So you're leaving the police and your wife? Yeah. Starting from scratch. You're sick inside, Johnny. Something's got you all fouled up. What is it? What's got you so torn up and confused? It's my fault, Pop. I make more money than he does. I just didn't realize how that must eat on a man. His pride. Oh, I suppose it makes him feel... Inferior is the word. Yeah, I guess you're right. But that's gonna be different. I'm quitting my job tomorrow. We'll live on what he makes. After all, Pop, you raised a whole family on a policeman's salary. Well, it just means cutting a few corners. The only thing that really worried me, aside from the letter, probably doesn't mean a thing. I found this by the telephone. What would he be doing with an attorney's card? Penrod Bizell. Did you forget your key again, darling? Darling, you never gave me one. What are you doing here? Visiting? I didn't expect you. Did you expect me to be somewhere else? Well, 
out exactly. I'm an ex-magician. Always look for the unexpected. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you're here, Hayes, I, I'd like to have a little talk with you. What for, Mr. Bedell? So tell me how you picked me up out of the gutter and made something out of me? And how I agreed never to do a job you didn't assign me? Exactly. You're becoming too ambitious, Hayes. Maybe. Why, Hayes? Could be I'm tired of doing all the work. Oh, no, you're wrong. All the work is done up here. And muscles are cheap, huh? Yes, I can buy all the brawn I want anywhere, anytime. Would you mind if I did my own thinking from now on? I would mind very much. Well, I guess you're gonna miss me then. Just, that's just about what I was gonna tell you. No kidding. Yeah. You're gonna fire me, huh? I can build persons up and, and I you can... you can tear persons down. I understand you're planning a big job for tonight. It's done. Done? It wasn't easy. You're a very smart man, Mr. Bedell. For a man as smart as you, I can't figure why you keep such important papers in your bedroom safe. Funny note, Mr. Bedell, isn't it? What have you done with them? This is right back where we started three years ago. I got my hands on some documents incriminating enough to send you away for 99 years. Only I wasn't smart then. Unless you give me a line of fast talk. Tell me all the things you were gonna do for me, what a big man I'd be. All that hot air and malarkey. And I gave you back 99 years of your life. This time I want $100,000 in cash and I want it tonight. Where do you think I could put my hands on that kind of money at night? You're a very smart man, Mr. Bedell. You do all the thinking. You said so. Well, think. Think hard. It's your problem. You've got the greatest goal of any man alive. Thank you. I'll be waiting for you in my hotel room. Tell me, what gives you such insufferable confidence? The knowledge that if you're not there with the money inside two hours, the whole batch of stuff goes to the district attorney. Wait a minute, Hayes. How did you get those papers? I had an accomplice. Aren't you going to ask me who? All right. Who? Your wife. trying to find Johnny Kelly. It's very important. I must reach him. Well, once I called the station he worked out of and left a message for him to call me when he ever happened to check in. Would you do that again? Well, what's the matter with you, Gramps? Do it yourself. <laughs> I'd much rather <laughs> not leave my name with the police. You call him and tell him it's urgent that I see him. Bedell is the name. Car 749, car 749, disturbance in alley between Superior and Huron Streets, east of Hudson Avenue. Car 749, okay. Good day, hit one little leaf, man. Come, Come on, on, roll it, roll it. So, 36. I want to see them tanks. There's nothing wrong with these here dice, man. Now, there's 36 bucks down there. You boys can cover all or any part. 
I want to see them dice. There's nothing wrong with these dice, man. Dominoes are lopsided. It's not a diamond. That money, they're legally yours. Look, I dropped my whole day's take there, and I got a wife and six... A sick wife and hungry little children. Shame on you, boy, for even being in a gambling game. I'm solely tempted to give you back your money. But my conscience tells me you ought to learn your lesson. Look, Johnson, all three of us dropped our whole days. But if those dominoes are loaded, it ain't legal. Look out, the blues are coming. All right, stay where you are. Well, if it isn't my old friend, the deacon. Just a quiet little game going on here, officer. Uh-huh. All that money's yours, Sam Deacon. Since it's laying there, it's open. No, sir. We were just breaking up the game. Give me the dice. How much is down there? Thirty-six bucks. Deacon, I'm shooting 36 bucks, and you're fading me. No, sir, Officer Kelly, I ain't. I said you're fading me for 36 bucks. <sighs> what do they say, Deacon? You and I both know what they say. All right, boys, pick up your money. Next time, be careful who you shoot craps with. Deacon here makes his living this way. He's a leech, a human bloodsucker. If you yell too loud when you lose, you're liable to wind up with no head. So wise up and get out of here. You ain't gonna take me in. <laughs> of course not, Deacon. By the way, how many times have I arrested you so far this month? Was it three? No, sir, four. Well, that's more than enough. I've been punished. I see the light. Living on the misery of poor little sucker. Shame on me. Shame on me. I'm gonna throw the book at you this time, Deacon. Really, you, you really gonna take me in? Through shaking people down for a while, Deacon, because you're gonna live in the county. That way, the only people you'll be shaking down are the dumb taxpayers, like me. Let me go, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll even get a job. Get in. Big responsibility looking out at the public, isn't it? Just routine. But I got a definite offer. If I could just put the act it's together. It's no use, Greg. I thought about it, but I got other plans now. I told you about it, didn't I? Comic routine. Mr. and Mrs. Bit. There must be other girls you can get. Hey, you'd be the wife, see? And I'd be the nagging husband. It's the switch. The nagging one is the husband. I got some of the material written down here. Well, some other time I... I gotta go back out to the window anyway. They ought to give me a longer break than 15 minutes. I say they should, Greg. Know how it feels to be out there for one solid hour and a half without a rest? <laughs> I can imagine. One, two. But I don't think about it. If I did, I'd be in a nut house. What do you think about? I got a game I play. I told Sally about it. He pretends he isn't there. Yeah. I, I, I'm counting, see? But all the time I'm thinking, I, I'm not in the window at all. I, I'm out by the Blue Caribbean, and, and Sally is with me. Lying there on a crystal white sand in a black bathing suit. And I could hear the waves hitting the beach, and I, I could see the white caps dancing across the water. You hurt all over, don't you, Greg? No. Not when I go the places where I go. Sometimes I'm on a mountaintop and it's snowing. And Sally, Sally's wearing a snow hood and blue ski pants and white mittens. She's laughing because she feels so cold and she feels so good. How could I get another girl to play my wife? Greg. If you don't play her, there's no act, that's all. That's for me. They want me back out in the window. Telephone, Sally, for you. You know who it is? Who else? Don't answer it. Please. Hi, Johnny. Got your message. Anything wrong? Did he leave any message? Oh, yeah. He said, um, 
Your appointment is changed. The time is now, and the place, the Continental Hotel, Hayes Stewart's room. Darling, what's better than money? You tell me. The black magic of Hayes Stewart. Darling, give me some magic. Best magician. Your magic touch. I'm in a different world. No wonder I'm willing to give up everything. Room 320. Okay. This is it, kitten. Is it all off? Mm-hmm. All of it. What are you so nervous about? You don't have to rub his face in it. But, darling, I was rubbing your face in it. Oh, you're upset. I've stolen a lot of things in my life, but never someone's wife. <laughs> What's so funny? You with a conscience. He doesn't have the money with him. I'll handle this. If he had the money, he'd be carrying it in something. Lydia, keep out of this. All right, where is it? I can explain everything. Where is it? But first, there are one or two things I'd like to say. May I sit down? I tried my best to help you the same as I helped others in the past. Uh, you, Lydia, when I first saw you, I was selling coffee and hamburgers behind a counter in a railroad station. Yes, I had an hour to kill. And you used it to murder years of my life. Sure, you made a lady out of me, the best-dressed hashlinger in Chicago. But you've never stopped talking about it since. You've thrown it in my face three times a day. You told everybody we met, look at my lovely wife. She used to be a two-bit waitress with broken arches. And look at her now. Yes, look at her now. Maybe I was boasting, because I was very proud of you. Consider, have I ever done anything really to hurt you, or you either? Tell him about the ride to Indiana. I don't know what you're talking about. I heard your instructions to that cop. Sure. How could anybody be hurt by a nice solid year in jail? Well, I guess there's nothing left to be said. Except I, I'd like to present this farewell gift to both. Look out! You were right. He hasn't got it. Why'd you have to shoot him, Hayes? You could have just taken his gun. He was an old man. What were you afraid of? Are you concerned with him or us? Us? But I didn't want to get mixed up in anything like this. Well, let's get out of here. Where to? Well, somebody must have heard that shot. They'll call the police. Where are we going to go? You can't shoot a man as prominent as him and run very far. You're right, the police will be here. This is my room. They have my name. Oh, Hayes, I'm scared. Wait a minute. They'll never search a police car for us. If he could use that cop, we can. He'll get us out of the state. You said that was the deal he made? Yes. Where do we find it? Well, he told him he'd be at the Silver Frolics. His name's John Kelly. Let's go. Calling car 749, car 749, Continental Hotel, room 320, a shooting. Car 749, okay. Did he say the Continental Hotel? He sure did. <laughs> Thank you.
Guest in 337 reported a shot, you see, but... Well, then we didn't investigate right away because it could have been a car backfiring or almost anything. Then the man in 337 called again, said he saw Hayes Stewart and a woman leaving. Said it looked like they were in an awful hurry. So I came up with a pass key. I knocked and nobody answered. I opened the door and found this man here the way you see him. I called the squad roll even before I called you, the gentleman. This man's in a bad way. Are you the house doctor? I'm a doctor. Uh, he lives in the building next door. I, I thought it best to ask him over. I can't do anything for him here. Everybody clear out until the squad row arrives. I said everybody clear out. All right, folks. Come on, Doc. Hey, Stuart? Yeah. The hotel manager said two people left the room. Who was with him? It's not important. Any idea where he went? Looking for you. Silver Frolics. Aren't you going to report in? Yeah. Police 31313. Give me the squad operator. Officer Kelly, car 749-21st district reporting in. That shooting at the Continental Hotel. Victim was Penrod Bedell. Yeah, that's him. We was shot by Hayes Stewart. The only lead I have is that Stewart may be headed for the Silver Frolics. Stand by. Right. Cars 749-771-774 and attention all cars. Wanted for assault with an intent to kill. Hayes Stewart. Description follows. Calling car 749. Car 749, come in. Car 749, acknowledge. That's Johnny's car. Hmm. They must still be on that Continental Hotel call. Let's go in on that call. Okay, by me. Car 784. 784. Go ahead, 784. It's 749, report. Not yet, they're tied up. We'll go in on that call. Okay, car 784. Silver Phronics on Wabash. <laughs> What is it? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. The police? Yeah, one of them's... Kelly. Boys want a good table with a nice view? Are you kidding? We're just looking around. Yeah? Who are you? Mrs. Penrod Bedell. Are you looking for Hayes Stewart? Yeah, I am. How'd you know? Well, your deal has changed. Arrest him. He... He just shot my husband. Deal? I don't know what you're talking about. But come on, we'll pick him up. Where is he? He's upstairs, but I can't go. Well, what's the matter, lady? If he knew I pointed him out, he'd kill me. Well, we'll protect you from him. Come along. I'll handle it. Hey, Stood. What is this? Don't you know? Your name Kelly? John Kelly? Yeah, that's my name. That's different. I've been looking for you. Well, even. I've been looking for you. Fine. You ready to take me? Yeah, I'm all ready. Well, you sure you got this straight? I'm positive. <laughs> well, okay. Only it won't be Indiana. I want you to take me to Cicero instead. You crazy? I'm taking you down to the detective bureau. You're under arrest for shooting Penrod Bedell. Quit being cute, copper. You made a deal with Bedell to take me out of town. A deal to do what? 
You're Officer John Kelly, aren't you? That's right. Suddenly crystal clear. over there. Anybody get hurt or anything like that? What happened? Tell the kid what happened, Lydia. You're pointing that gun at me. Am I, sweetheart? Am I? I'm going. Shut Ace. up, you're staying. You look as if you're crazy. You're right. Crazy's the word. I was happy. I was contented following orders. And you came sneaking around with your big ideas. I was only trying to help. Telling me how we could take the old man for all the money. The places we were gonna live. Making me the hottest hood in town. And then when the showdown came. Oh, you were great in the showdown, Lydia. True blue, 100% solid. You were sensational, Lydia. In fact, you were so great that I'm gonna take... Hayes, don't! Hayes, let me get out of here. Let me get out of sight. Hayes! Why don't you tell me how much you love me, sweetheart? Oh, you fool, you. I used to do a magic act about a disappearing girl. Here's the way it goes, Lydia. Just like this. Just like Madell, huh? We're worse off than he is. I think she's dead. Yeah. It's funny. Paul said the shooting was inside. You better go on and check. Took your call, Johnny. Who was it? Hey, Stuart. Yeah. The hood. No. Cop killer.
Johnny, I know how you feel. I don't think you have the slightest idea how I feel. Why do you say that? I feel like I'm in a cement mixer being slowly chopped and pounded to death. I've seen all I can stand to see. He was an old man. He should have been retired by now. That's the way he wanted it. To be killed in the line of duty. Stupid copper. You wanted to see me? Yeah. You saw it, didn't you? What? The shooting on the street. You know what I'm talking about. Answer my question. Where did Hay Stewart go? I'm a mechanical man. I don't see, I don't hear, and I don't feel. Remember? You mean to tell me you didn't see him go? I didn't see a thing. Greg, Johnny's father was killed right here in this club. Kelly? I saw it, all right. Well, then come up with some answers. I can even do better. What, for instance? It's a slight chance, a hundred to one shot. I'm the only one that did see him kill that girl. He's still somewhere in the neighborhood. When he realizes that he's got a witness, when he figures out that I'm not made out of just sawdust and bailing wire, he might be back. Just tell me where he went. I don't know exactly where it went. Some nearby building, I'm sure. I have a hunch he'll show. So, lose yourself out in the street. Wait for it to happen. Greg, you're not going back to that window. Sure I am. To wait and count, dream some more. Of the blue sea. And mountaintops with falling snow. Always. That's the way a man is when he's made of sawdust. Johnny. You can't let him go back to that window. What if he can help me? Stop him, Johnny. Please stop him. He, he's just a nice guy who, who shouldn't have to die like a freak in a window. He shouldn't. He, he can't. just struck me funny. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be a cop. Here he is again, the mechanical man. He walks, he moves, but is he real? Is he a human being or is he a machine? Guess whether he is man or robot. The correct answer entitles you Get in, to the Sarge. What's up? I'll explain in a minute. Is he a human being or is he a machine? The mechanical man. He walks, he moves, but is he real? Is he a human being or is he a machine? Please, please, shut up. Please, Hayes, tell me what happened in the club. Nothing, I tell you. I just winged him, that's all. What's the matter now? Why leave here? This is as safe a place as any. You saw those cops roll away. Yeah. Then there's that dummy. What about it? You saw me kill Lydia. It ain't a human being. How can it see anything? That's what I gotta find out. Huh? I never killed anyone before her. There's not gonna be anybody. Not anybody <sighs> can say they saw me. He's, please, let me cut out. Let you what? Beat it! Oh, no. When... That dummy's not the only one who saw what I did to Lydia. He's... You don't think... You... You see... Go 
Come on, what's the big mystery? What's your plan? Stay out. You think he'll come back? It's our only chance. Call and get another car. I already have. Listen to me. People... I, sometimes people make a lot of mistakes in their lives. I know I have. Too many of them. I almost made another one tonight, a terrible one. But... Now I want to straighten out and, and have a good life. Of him. He's cute. Think it's real? That thing? Greg. Greg, I... I want to dream like you. Of the beautiful things. Please come out of this window now. Greg. I want to do the comedy act. You know, the husband and wife routine. I think it's awfully cute that the, the husband is the one that does the nagging. Please, Greg. Please. Harry, look, look! The mechanical thing is crying! Then he is a real man.
sergeant cars responding to plan five in the 21st district. A. Stewart, wanted for the murder of a police officer, last seen fleeing west from State Street, an alley between Kinsey and Hubbard. Cars 762, 769, and 782 proceed to stated area and attempt to barricade alleys at Dearborn Street, Clark, and LaSalle Street. Car 769, okay. 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 <laughs> Cars 762, 769, 782, and 788 proceed to area under elevated tracks between Kinsey Street and the river, just east of Wells. Police officer needs help.
There's an L station a few blocks that way. Get up on the tracks and cut them off. Hey, Stewart. This is the police. Halt or you'll be shot down. Hey, Stewart. This is your last warning. Give yourself up. Wait a minute. That's Johnny Kelly. How can you see that from here? That's Kelly, all right. Officer Kelly. If you are Kelly, if you're a police officer, identify yourself. If you are a police officer, identify yourself. Do you want me to come and take me? Yeah, this is Johnny's badge, all right. And he won't be down till that killer's down. filled in for you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we all feel very badly about Pop. Oh, uh, Johnny. Your badge. You almost lost it. Yes, sir. Joe. Joe. Who are you looking for? My partner. Didn't I tell you he was out tonight with a near ache? Every minute of every hour in the 
this melting pot of every race, creed, color, and religion, and humanity. People are working and laughing and dying, and some, like Johnny Kelly, are being born again in the city that never sleeps. Thank you.